I don't know about you, but here's a problem I sometimes run into when I'm working with robotics. I've got some microcontroller like an Arduino or an ESP board, and it's connected to a more powerful processor like a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson. They're communicating over some protocol, maybe serial or I2C, something like that. The problem here comes when it's time to reprogram the Arduino. This is usually inside a chassis somewhere. I've got to get in, I've got to unplug it all. And, and then I've got to plug it into my main computer that I'm doing all my development on. Then I write the Arduino code, I upload it to the board, and then I have to unplug it again, get it back into the chassis, and plug it back into here. Now that's fine, it works, but what if there was a better way we could do this? What if there's a way we could write our code on our machine here, and then have it send it to the Raspberry Pi and upload it to the Arduino? That way it could stay inside our robot and we never have to pull it out and redo all our wiring. There are a few ways to do this, but there's one that I just reckon makes the whole process so easy you'll be kicking yourself for not doing it sooner. So first I'm going to recap the normal way to do it, which might be helpful if you're a bit new to this, and then I'll show you the better way. So you can use the chapter marker to script straight to that section if you want to. So normally you'd start here on your development computer with the normal Arduino IDE installed. And you've also got to make sure your user is added to the dial out group so that you can use serial comms. Then you need to get the sketch that you want to upload to the Arduino. I'm going to be pulling mine from GitHub, but it doesn't matter where you got yours from, you might already have it on your computer. You open up that sketch in the Arduino IDE, you plug in the Arduino, select the board type, so in my case it's an Arduino Nano, select the serial port, so for me that's going to be slash dev slash TTY USB 0, then we'll hit verify to compile the code, and upload to flash it onto the Arduino. Now that the code's on there, I can unplug the Arduino from the computer and plug it back into the Raspberry Pi. And to check that the code is working properly and running, I'll connect to the Pi over SSH and run a program called Miniterm, so that's just a serial terminal program. Uh, you want to make sure that you've done the dial out thing on the Pi as well, so it can use serial comms. And this is good, these are the responses I was expecting to get for the code that I was running. So that's the normal way you'd do this. It's fine, but a bit annoying, especially if you've got a lot of wires to plug and unplug from your Arduino each time. What if there was a way we could upload directly from the Pi to the Arduino? There are three ways that immediately come to mind to me to solve this problem. Firstly, to run a VNC server on the Pi and run the IDE over that. That's actually what I used to do, uh, but not everybody wants to run a display server and it's still a bit annoying and fiddly. Secondly, you can access the IDE by forwarding X over SSH. I can't remember if I've actually ever done this with the Arduino IDE, but it always just seems to be a pain whenever I try to do it with other programs. And thirdly is to use the Arduino command line interface, or CLI. I've got to be honest, I've never actually used it. I'm sure it works great, but it's a bit less user friendly than the GUI. Plus you still need a way to edit your files remotely. Maybe you'd use a command line editor like Vi or Nano. And so that brings us to the best way to do it. We'll be using VS Code with a combination of the remote development extension and the Arduino extension. Now this process assumes you've already got the Arduino IDE installed on the Pi. Um, I did that when I first set it up and installed the OS and I had a monitor plugged in. I'm pretty sure you can install it later on the command line though. In this example, I've got version 1.8.15 of the IDE installed on the Pi. I think this process will also work with the CLI version, but I don't know about the new revamped version two of the IDE. I've not used it before. Make sure you do the dial out thing on the Pi as well so that it's got access to the serial ports. All right, I've got the Pi connected over SSH and I'll start by cloning that same repo that I had before. Then what we can do is I'll open VS Code and I wanna head over to the extensions menu and search for SSH and we'll find the remote SSH extension and you wanna make sure that's installed. So I've already got it installed here. And this lets us use VS Code on this computer to edit files on a different computer over SSH. So then we'll click the little green arrow in the bottom left hand corner to open a connection. So we'll go connect to host, click add new SSH host. You want to type the same SSH command that you'd normally use to connect to the Pi. Click the file to update. It'll say host added. And then we can click the connect button. And so that's going to open up a new window and we, oh, we've got to type in our password here so that it can connect to it. 
And then what it's done is it's installed a mini copy of VS Code on the remote that it can connect to. So now we click open folder and we can find that those files that we cloned. And so now we can see and we can edit all of those files that are actually sitting on the Raspberry Pi, not on the computer that we're typing on. So I'll, I'll go down, I'll find a spot here and I'll just create a new variable, just add some code. You can already see this is really useful. We can edit our Arduino code, we can use source control to see what's changed, that sort of thing. And you could pair this with the Arduino command line tool and that wouldn't be a bad setup, but it gets even better. We want to go back into the extensions menu and this time we'll search for Arduino. Now click on the actual thing. Sometimes it'll just say install, sometimes it'll say install on remote. So we'll just click install, let it do its thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear what we have in the search bar. We can see here under SSH installed extensions, we've got the Arduino extension. That means it's installed on the remote, not on our main computer. We want to go to the extension settings. Now there's user, remote and workspace. We want to be changing the settings on the remote, otherwise they won't be doing anything. And if we scroll down the bottom, we'll find the most interesting one. So if you are using the Arduino CLI, you want to tick that, but we want to look at the Arduino path. This is the path to where Arduino is actually installed on your computer. Because the Arduino install is weird. It, it installs it into kind of a funny spot. To find out where we've got it installed, we want to open up a terminal and I'm going to type ls-l and then in backticks, that's the one under the tilde key to the left of one, which Arduino. You can see here, it's actually installed in our downloads folder. So we'll copy that path and put it in there. And then just to make sure that applies, I'm going to reload the window. So I'm going to type control shift P to open up the command palette and type reload and then we'll hit reload window. It's going to ask us for the password again, so we'll just type that in. So now that we've got the Arduino extension installed and set up, we want to start using it. In theory, it should just work out of the box, but unfortunately for me right now, it doesn't. The good news is there are ways that we can get around all the problems that I've got. And as far as I know, there are some updates coming which will hopefully fix most of these. So if you're watching this in the future, you might be able to skip a couple of these steps. So we can go to the output, go to the Arduino menu, and we should see things here right now and there's nothing. So I'm going to start configuring it. We'll, we'll start by choosing our serial port. So we'll click there and select TTY USB 0 in my case. Then the next thing we would do is select board type but this menu just does nothing. I think it doesn't work properly over the remote and select programmer also does nothing. The way we're going to get around this is first by choosing a sketch. So we'll open up our command palette again and type select sketch and choose the main sketch. It'll be whatever it is for you. Then that'll create this little VS code folder with arduino.json in it. In there, we want to add an extra line with board and then whatever your board is. So mine's Arduino colon AVR colon nano because I've got an Arduino nano. And now you can see once we save that, it's going to actually activate the extension. Things will kind of start working. So just let it do a quick run through. And now we can select the programmer we want. So if we go down and click select programmer, we've got all the options. I'm going to choose AVR ISP Mark II. Now we can open up our command palette again and verify the sketch. So you see it'll do its little verification. Now that it's verified, we can upload it to the board. So in the command palette, we can type upload and you can see it'll upload the sketch. Now we want to connect to this over serial and the Arduino extension does actually include a serial monitor built in. So you can click this button down here to open that, but it doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know if it's read only and you can't send anything. I've, I've never really used it. I tend to just use a different serial terminal like Minicom or Miniterm. So you can just click the X to close that connection and then open up a terminal either in VS Code or I'm actually just going to use that same terminal that I had open earlier. And again, we'll just open up Miniterm. 
and you can see it's still working. One last thing, there's a little warning that was popping up before about not having an output directory. To fix that, you go into the arduino.json, we can add an extra line that says output, and then put the name of a folder in there. I'm just gonna call mine build. Now you can see if I try to rebuild it, I'll do another verify. It's gonna verify the sketch. And now it's created a little build directory up there. And so it'll be able to cache some files and in theory, it makes it faster for future builds. I think it used to do this automatically. I don't remember having to always manually set that, but if you do that, it should work. So that's it. Using the VS Code remote development extension and the Arduino extension, we've saved ourselves the headache of having to unplug and plug the board every time we make a change. And as a bonus, we've got VS Code's interface where we can see all our files, make git commits, whatever we want. Of course, even if you're not doing remote development, you can still use the Arduino extension on your main machine instead of the Arduino IDE if you like it better. If you've got any of the tips, leave them in the comments. And if you like this and you want more useful robotics tips, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.